Hi everyone, it's Darlene. It's great to be back on YouTube. I know it's been a while. Today's card uses the Stampin' Up! Balloon Builder set, which releases today. I'm also using the It's Wild background stamp for the border. Here is the set by Stampin' Up! You can see all the different pieces that you get for making all sorts of balloon animals. Um, so I'm just going to run through some of the animals that I created with these stamps. I made today's card a birthday card because today I am celebrating the one year birthday of my Live Love Cards community. Um, I'm going to be giving away two free one year subscriptions to the community. So if you're interested in entering, all you need to do is leave a comment on my blog post. Um, not on YouTube here, so look at the YouTube description if you're on YouTube for a link to my blog and just leave a comment there. I'll be drawing on January 12th, so be sure to enter before then. And if you do become a member, over the next two weeks I'm having some great giveaways. I've got a $50 gift certificate to Ellen Hudson and one for Simon Says Stamp, and you're automatically eligible if you are a member. So I hope to see you there. I have even more animals than this. This is the complete set and this is a download that's available on my DarleneDesign.com site if you'd like to go there and download it for free. Alright, let's get to the card. I'm going to be using, of course, the Balloon Builder set and also this It's Wild background stamp also by Stampin' Up. I'm going to start with the Blushing Bride Stampin' Up ink. It's kind of like a beigey pink and also I've got some Stampin' Up Whisper White cardstock which I always use Stampin' Up! cardstock whenever I'm using Stampin' Up! inks because you just get the best results that way. Take the largest balloon and stamp his body for my little bunny here. And I want to show you that I'm using my absorber to clean my stamps. I keep it in a Tupperware on my table because it is damp and I felt like every time I was putting it down on my table I was putting it next to paper and I was getting my paper wet so I just keep it nice and safely in this compartment. And then you can see how stained it is but it still works great and you don't have to worry about getting those threads from the baby wipes. It's just a fantastic stamp cleaner. The next step is to take the second balloon, which is a little bit smaller, and this is going to be his head. I'm going to stamp it kind of overlapped a little bit at the top. And you'll see my head kind of um, in and out here, and that's because these stamps really have to be lined up, and my camera is straight overhead my work surface. So what you want to do is overlap the edges. So at each end, I'm going to overlap, and then it'll look like the balloon is a single balloon that has been twisted up and make, made into a shape. For his cheeks, I'm using the larger circle in the set and I'm using the same Blushing Bride ink. So it's going to go on a little bit darker and look like it's just a different part of him. And I'll do two of those right down the center, but I'm going to have them go off that head balloon just a little bit to give it some dimension. For his arms, I'm using this short fat balloon. One's going to be going up to hold a balloon and the other one's just going to be wrapping around his belly. And then I'm just going to add two feet at the bottom with that same stamp. For his nose, I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I didn't want it to be too black, so I inked up my stamp and then I stamped it off on a piece of scratch paper. And that just made it more of a grayish black than a solid black. And then I'm going to stamp it in between his two cheeks, but a little bit up, so not exactly in the center. And you can see it comes out to be a really nice shade. And then for the balloon, I'm stamping it with rose red ink. It's one of my favorite reds. It's kind of like a reddish pink, but not too bright. It's a little bit more subtle. And I'm just going to stamp that in the upper right hand corner. And then for the string, I'm just going to lay it out and make sure it's all lined up. I'm going to grab my acrylic block and put it on. And then I'm going to use a uh, post-it to mask off the top to make sure I don't go too far into the balloon. And you can see I already stamped this, so I've got my, my string there already. I'll ink this up again with the Memento black ink. And uh, just stamp it right there so it looks like he's holding it. And it goes right up into the center of the balloon. With a lot of the balloons that I created from this set, I used the Stampin' Up! black marker to add some detail. So I'm just going to hand draw some eyes here. Just some circles. It doesn't have to be fancy or anything. And then I'm going to add his mouth, just kind of two lines that come down from his nose and curl around to make a little smile. And then I'm going to add some kind of freckle whiskers on his cheeks. 
so right now my bunny looks like he's sort of floating and I don't I don't really want him to look like he's floating so I'm gonna ground him by adding some grass at the bottom I'm just getting some Copic markers I've got YG 21 and YG 25 I'm just flicking upward to create some grass if you don't have Copic, Copic markers you could do uh, water-based markers I would mute them a little bit with a blender pen or you could use your zig watercolor markers you really just use anything to add some color to the bottom so it doesn't look like he's floating and then, of course, the happy birthday, which comes with a set along with a couple of other sentiments. And this is Memento again. I'm going to trim out this panel so that I have some uh, room for a border on the edges. I'm just sort of eyeballing it for now. So I'm just trying to get equidistance from the right and the left side. So then I think I decided I wanted to add, take off a little bit more from the right hand side. And in the end, it turned out to be about a half an inch from each side. To finish off this panel, I'm going to freehand a line on each edge. Notice that I'm not moving anything except my elbow. So my fingers are staying straight, my wrist is straight, my left hand is straight, and I'm just moving my elbow down and sliding my hand across the table. It's not going to be perfectly straight, but that's the look that I want. But if you do it carefully, you should get a pretty straight line. Alright, I've got some Blushing Bride cardstock that matches my ink and I'm going to take my It's Wild stamp, I'm going to ink it up with some Versamark ink and I'll take my strip and what I'd like to do is just lay it down on one side so my left finger is going to push it down onto the stamp and then I just let it go with my right and that just makes sure that it doesn't slide across the stamp at all. Then I can rub it on the top to make sure I get good coverage. I'll flip it over and I have to peel it off sometimes and then I'll use the other side of the stamp to make sure I have a, a different pattern for my other border on the left side. Same technique, just hold it down with my left finger and then drop it with my right hand. Again, rub it at the top and then I should have my pattern. I'm going to sprinkle that with some clear embossing powder and then I'll heat it to set it. And you get a nice tone on tone look with some shine. The amount of definition you get from this technique is actually pretty surprising, but it's great for a subtle background that you don't want to draw attention away from your focal point. So I'm going to put some ATG tape runner on each of these pieces and I'm going to put them on the edges of my card. And you can see uh, I didn't cut these very well, so I've got this bottom part that's sticking out. So I tried to get it off with the trimmer, but it was just too thick with these two layers because I've already folded my cardstock. So I just took a scissor and I just cut from one side to the other really carefully and it worked out just fine. I think because I had already kind of trimmed, trimmed it off a little bit, so there was a little bit of an edge to follow. So now I'm going to take my panel, put some more ATG on the back of that, and then I'll center it right there in the middle of my card. And that is the card for today. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's good to be back on YouTube. And uh, I hope you'll go over to my blog to enter my drawing for two free one-year subscriptions to my community. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.